Washington DC is finally in a state where it's somewhat stable. Now it's time to get on the offensive. After securing the perfusion bioreactor from the DARPA labs, the next step is to start mass producing the antivirals. But in order to do this, the right people are required to run the project, so that it can be safely distributed among the population. Vitaly Chinenko is one of the very few surviving expert virologists, who also had first-hand experience working with the creator of the original dollar flu, Dr. Gordon Amherst. His skill set would be invaluable for this task, and it just so happens that after all these months that the SHD has managed to locate him. For the last eight months or so, Vitaly has been a hostage of Aaron Keener. However, it now seems that the Black Tusk have managed to get their hands on him. They are keeping him on Coney Island, in a holding cell in the middle of a local ballpark. But how did they get hold of him? Keener surely wouldn't have just handed him over. Has Keener now teamed up with the Black Tusk? And what the hell are the cleaners doing there? Since relatively early on in the outbreak, Vitaly has been a prisoner of Aaron Keener. While working with the LMB, Keener captured him from the Russian consulate before the division was able to step in. When the SHD pursued the LMB to their headquarters, rather than stay and fight, Keener left them for dead, taking Vitaly with him. Up until now, this was the last we heard of Vitaly Trenenko. Keener had openly told the SHD that along with Gordon Amherst's research notes, and a DNA printer, he would be producing his own, more powerful, weaponized version of the virus. Many months later, they both seem to have come out of hiding. I don't know why he is forcing me to make this. I don't know if I want to know. Kinner never does anything by chance. There is always a purpose. At least one. Sometimes ten. For everything he does. I don't want to speculate because it's too dark. Knowing the things he's done, and the things this new virus can do. But if we're lucky, he will use this on himself. And this is all just an elaborate way to get me to kill him in a very dramatic fashion. I don't know how anyone could live with themselves after the things he's done. I don't know how to live with myself. I didn't know what I was doing when I was working with Amherst. That work was about science, not the application. I didn't see the applications, but now, with Kinner's virus, I see too many, and all of them terrify me. I'm sorry, Mr. Kinner. I don't know what happened. It's okay. We can try again. I don't have any more of the viral samples. They were destroyed in the experiment. That's fine. You don't keep all your eggs in one basket. I can get more. You have more of the virus? Of course, Vitaly. I get you whatever you need. Just stay focused on your work and try to stay calm. You make silly mistakes when you're stressed. I wouldn't want you to hurt yourself. Thank you, Mr. Keener. Sleep well. I'll get you another sample. I will see you in the morning. Good night, Mr. Keener. True to his word, Keener has been using Vitaly to create and perfect his new and improved version of the virus. Vitaly has obviously been trying his best not to help and in fact sabotaged the project. But Kina being Kina was prepared for this. The latest version is more potent and the time from exposure to termination has been cut in half. Average time of death after exposure on the last batch was 5 minutes and 24 seconds. Results are promising. Kina will be pleased. This is not me. This is not who I wanted to be. I wanted to help people. To cure cancer with viruses, not weaponize them. But Keener? He forces me to use my research to... I wish I was brave enough to take my own life, but... I can't. I'm a coward. It would be so easy to just drop a vial on the ground and let it take me. But I can't. If I get it down to one minute, then... Then I think I wouldn't be afraid anymore. I could handle that pain for a minute. But not for five. Okay. Back to work. Vitelli has been well looked after by Kina, but he's still pushing him to do something that is completely against his morals. Kina is a dangerous man, and Vitelli is well aware of what he's capable of. 
Although he's been good to him, as far as one could be when held captive, Vitaly is worried about what might happen to him if he doesn't do what is instructed. He is alone, and he's been a hostage for so long that he has no idea if anyone is even looking for him, or even knows that he's missing. In Vitaly's eyes, if he was strong enough, he would have removed himself from the equation long ago. This sort of work isn't him. He wanted to help people. He's an academic, but he's no hero. Are you finished? Yes. Great. So, we need to talk about your next project. Please, Mr. Kinner. The results of the latest experiments are violent enough. Please, don't make me create something like that again. Oh, no, Vitaly. You misunderstand me. Are you going to kill me? <laughs> Vitaly, of course not. I'm letting you go. You are? I found a group that will keep you safe. And you've really done exceptional work, and people are starting to take notice. Who are these people? Uh, Black Tusk. Uh, you like them. They're a very elite group and professional. They'll keep you busy. Eventually, Vitelli completed Kina's task. He had created a new weaponized version of the virus that was capable of killing someone who was exposed in just over five minutes. So Kina now has a new plan for him. He was gifting them to the Black Tusk. But what was he getting in return for him? Kina is well aware of the value of having such an asset, so the Black Tusk must have something that he really needs. So what's the deal here? You're just going to give us Chernenko? Yes. And what do you want in return? I've got something in mind. Don't worry, it's a reasonable trade. I'll send you the details. From what I've heard about you, you don't strike me as reasonable. You can't believe everything you hear, Dolores. Jones. We're not on a first name basis. You're not my friend, Kina. You're a tough cookie, Jones. I respect that. Dolores Jones is the Black Tusk commander in New York. She occupies the Coney Island area in Brooklyn. Kina contacted Jones and offered Vitelli as a trade. She's likely the one that we saw in the trailer leading up to episode 3. Naturally, knowing Kina and his past, Jones was suspicious and questions Kina's motives. He simply stated that he has something in mind for a future date. This only pushed her suspicions further, but the Russian scientist was too valuable to pass up this offer. He's not infected, is he? Why would he be infected? You play in the dirt, you tend to get dirty. A virologist without a proper lab? I expect him to have a virus. He's clean. But if you're worried about it, just put him in quarantine. <sighs> you really ain't making it easier to trust you. I'm sure you've got resources at your disposal. Stick him in a box and have your medics give him a once over. We'll see. He's healthy as anyone can be in this situation. Yeah. That's what I'm worried about. Worried that Vitelli might be infected with the green poison, he was placed in a containment chamber, so he could be monitored before moving him on. She had brought in BTSU operative Elijah Sumner to help her team protect the asset, and this is when it became apparent that the SHD were aware of what was happening on the island. Vivian Conley is a former division agent who turned her back on the SHD not long after she lost her family to the green poison earlier on in the outbreak. Before activation, she was a counter-terrorism intelligence agent and chemical engineer. After parting ways with the division, she came across the now leaderless members of the cleaner faction. They took her in, understanding the pain and suffering she was going through. Conley went on to reassemble the cleaners and reignite their purpose of eradicating the virus and all of those responsible for its creation. She picked up where Joe Farrow left off before he was slain by the agents of the SHD. Except this time, they were being led by someone with a military background, someone who was highly trained in strategy and has in-depth knowledge and insight into the enemy they were coming up against. Conley set forth upgrading their weapons and equipment and helped place this grief-stricken group of ex-government contract workers into a far more driven and formidable force than the city has ever seen before. Vivian, if you want your family to get justice, we need to work together. The cleaners don't trust outsiders. They trust you. I'm not an outsider. I just want to help. They'll want to know where their intel is coming from. You're an agent. They know how resourceful you can be. And if they keep pushing, just tell them it was Kajika. Okay. When can you get it to me? Tomorrow. Just tell me where and when to meet you. You know where I stand, Keener. 
I do, Vivian. This is important to you. We need to get justice for your family. You know where he is? I do. You're positive. Last man battalion had him. Black Tusk showed up, and they were more than happy to switch sides. Chernenko's been in their custody the whole time. That Russian motherfucker is going to pay for what he did. You have to be smart about it. I'll clear the boardwalk, then your team will be clear to strike. All right. Black Tusk won't know what hit him. Fast forward to the events happening on Coney Island. Conley is approached by Aaron Keener. He informs her of Vitaly's whereabouts and that the LMB has had him the whole time. Without their leader, they joined up with the Black Tusk and were absorbed into their ranks. On top of this, they handed over custody of the Russian scientist. Consumed by rage and thrilled by the idea of being able to enact revenge on someone that they deemed responsible for helping cause the dollar flu outbreak, Conley ordered the cleaners to assault the Black Tusk on Coney Island. We're set. 1600. Meet at the ferry terminal. Fuck yeah. I can't believe you found that fucker. Good to have friends on the inside. We ever gonna meet this insider? Cut the chatter. Sorry, ma'am. All right. Who's ready to collect Jernanko's ashes? The cleaners couldn't know that Conley was getting this information from Aaron Keener. Firstly, as Conley said, they don't trust outsiders. And secondly, if we remember from the West Side Piers in Division 1, all of the factions were hunting Keener down so it's horrendously unlikely that they would trust any intel coming from him. And they would be right. We can see from these interactions that Keener isn't just betraying the Black Tusk by sending in the cleaners to have their revenge, but he's also manipulating a fellow rogue agent in order to have her carry out his plans. Vitaly Trenenko doesn't know it, but he's the most valuable asset on the planet right now. The SHD need him to oversee the management and production of the antivirals that are to be dispersed among the population. The Black Tusk want him for presumably the same thing when they manage to recapture the bioreactor and antivirals from the White House. And the cleaners? Well, they just want to see him burn. However, unfortunately for the cleaners, the division beat them to it. They launch a strike on the island, having to throw all caution to the wind in order to extract Vitaly. They had to strike hard and fast before the Black Tusk had time to react. The Division managed to extract Vitaly before an unexpected attack from the cleaners swept across the island. The Division agents fall back as the cleaners quickly begin to burn through the remaining forces of the Black Tusk. Dolores Jones and the Black Tusk quickly catch on that they've been betrayed by Keener. The SHD find out that Keener is still close and proceed to search for him on the island. While the cleaners are burning everything in sight and the bulk of the Black Task Force is being kept busy, the Division agents manage to come across and kill both Elijah Sumner and Dolores Jones, effectively putting an end to the Black Tusk presence on Coney Island. What the? I lost control of the drone. Who the hell is doing this? Congratulations. Agent, you got Chernenko. Now that's okay, you can keep him. He has served his purpose. Now this operation went much smoother than I expected, and that is partially thanks to you. I know it's frustrating. I'm right here and you're right there. But never forget, I will always be one step ahead of you. I'm in control, because I'm not afraid to take control. You still follow orders, that's why you never win. I'll see you real soon. While scouting the island with a drone to locate Kina, control of the drone was suddenly lost. Although it seems he wasn't expecting the Division to be involved in this conflict, he certainly doesn't appear to be phased by their involvement. The Division have once again missed their opportunity to capture Keener. But the puzzling thing is, Keener says, this operation went much smoother than expected, partially due to you. So what did he actually achieve? Obviously he managed to wipe out the Black Tusk in the area, but that surely couldn't have been all. Yes, Vitaly finished making his new super virus, so it didn't matter if he was used as bait, to bring the cleaners up against the Black Tusk, but I have a feeling that it certainly wasn't in his plan for the SHD to rescue him. 
so for the first time, they may have actually managed to get one up on him. But regardless, he got away, and he's now equipped with a new, far more deadly version of the virus. He also happens to have the entire cleaner faction under his control, indirectly at least. Plus, as we've seen from the Warlords of New York trailers, he has the Rikers faction as well. So for me, with his army growing, and now the new virus, the risks he took on Coney Island just to remove the Black Tusk presence doesn't make complete sense to me. I'm sure there's more to the story, that I'm sure we'll hear about in year two, Warlords of New York. So in summary, Kina had Vitelli create a new, more dangerous version of the virus. Kina then gifted Vitelli to the Black Tusk and turned for some help in the future. Kina manipulated fellow rogue agent Vivian Conley, now a highly influential member of the Cleaners, into attacking the Black Tusk. The SHD launched an attack on Coney Island and rescued Vitelli. The Black Tusk on Coney Island were wiped out by the Division and the Cleaners. Aaron Kina managed to escape and is happy with how the operation went. We already know from the Year 2 trailers that we'll be following Kina into Lower Manhattan. But what do you think Kina is up to? What's been going on on Coney Island? They've changed Kina a little with this episode and the upcoming expansion. Don't get me wrong, he's still totally my boo. He just seems a lot more evil all of a sudden. More of a classic villainous character than we've seen in the past. Anyway, hopefully this cleared up the story a little as to what's happened in episode 3. If you were at all interested in the lore of the game and you're needing a little bit of a recap, I have a ton of videos in the description dating all the way back to when the virus was first released in The Division 1. I warn you though, some of those earlier videos are a little cringy. I've learnt a lot in the last couple of years around production value, I think. Thank you very much for watching, please let me know if anything needs clarifying, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!